During this video, we are going to be talking about the page editor and covering all the different options that we have here when it comes to customizing your pages inside of InstaSuite. So right now I have a template, a sales page template loaded up here, the default template. I haven't made any changes to it yet. So let's go ahead and jump in. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the top navigation bar at the very top here. So on the far left, you can see it says variation A. This menu here is where we can create different split tests for our page. So I could create a new variation. I could create a duplicate of the page I have right now and then make my own changes to the duplicate. Or I could start with a brand new template and split test those two different pages. I'm going to close out of that for now. And right next to that, you're going to see the change URL button. If I click on this, this allows me to customize the URL for this page. Pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to close out of that. Moving over to the right side, we have these two arrows, and this is going to be the undo button and the redo button. So if I was to, let's say, delete something on accident, I could go ahead and undo that and bring it back. And let's say I accidentally were to undo something, I could click the other arrow to redo it. And as you can see, it's going to delete that sub headline again. So I'm going to undo that for now. The next option that we have here is the mobile view option. So I can click on this and this is going to show us what our website looks like on a mobile phone. Now, while we are in the mobile view, I can still come in here and make changes so that I can see directly how that impacts on my mobile viewed website. I'm going to switch back to the desktop view for now. The next option is a little gear icon. And when I click on that, this is our page settings. So we have page options header options, conversion tools, scripts and tracking code, the ability to change our template or to save our current website as a template by itself. So let's get started with the page options. We're going to click on that. From here we have the general tab, which is the page title and a description. We also have keywords, the ability to hide this page from search engines, and we can adjust the page width and the background color. We can also upload our own background image, and we have a few settings to customize that image, or we can do a background video instead. And all we need is a YouTube video URL here. And we also have the typography settings for our page. I'm going to close out of the page options for now. We're going to go back to the gear icon. And this time we're going to click on header options. Here we have the ability to display a header. So when I check mark that, as we can see, we get this little drop down bar at the very top and it adds a header to our website. Now we do have a few different options for our header, like the header width, the background color, and the margins. Now whatever is contained in the header is up to you. So we're going to click on the logo and by default, it's going to use the global site name as the header. So as we can see, Insta Demo is my site name. We can click this. We can use the global site logo. We can use custom text or a custom logo. And by clicking on any one of these, it's going to give me another option to enter my headline or my logo or whatever it may be. And as we can see, that changes up here as I type it out. And then we have a few settings regarding whichever option you select here. So since I selected custom text, we have a few different text options here. We also have the ability to add a tagline to the far right. So I'm going to click that. And now on the far right, we can see this is my tagline. Again, we can customize that here and then we can edit the text here. Another option that we can have inside of our header can be a menu. So I'm going to click on display menu and we can see we now have a nice navigation menu inside of our header. We have our menu position and then we have our menu style. And you can see that we need to click on each link to modify the link text and or the URL. So let's say for example, this says last menu and I don't want it to say last menu. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to open up a new menu link settings here where we can customize the text. So instead of saying last menu, I can say blog, for example, on click, we can have it go to a URL or scroll to a block. I'm going to have it go to a URL and then I can enter mywebsite.com slash blog. And we also have the ability to add an action to this navigation link. We can make it a sibling, add children, or we can delete this link altogether. Then we have a color override menu here if we want to customize that color. I'm going to close out of this for now. We are going to reopen our header options because once we activate our menu, we also have this new tab which says menu colors. 
And as you can see, this allows us to customize our menu colors. I'm going to close out of this for now. I'm going to click on the gear icon again, and this time we have conversion tools. So we're going to click on that, and we have four different conversion tools that you can enable on your website. The first one is going to be the pop-up. So I'm going to click on enable pop-up. Next, we need to choose when we want this pop-up to load. So each time the page is loaded, after the first scroll, the first time visit only, once a day, once a browser session, or on exit intent. So select that option there. We can also add a display delay if we wanted to. And then we need to create a pop-up. So I'm going to click on create new pop-up. And when I do that, we get this nice plain white box here. At the very top, we can see we have a pop-up name and we can name this whatever we want. And to add content to your pop-up, you need to click on the plus symbol on the left-hand side. You next need to select which element you would like to use. So text, for example. Once I click on text, we need to choose which element I would like to use. So I'm going to use a large heading. And then you just click it and drag it and drop it inside of your pop-up. And then from here, we can customize this and make any changes that we would like to make. I'm going to go ahead and exit my pop-up for now. We're going to click on the exit at the top right. Another option that we have here is the info bar. I'm going to click on enable info bar. And again, you can see we have the same options as the pop-up. I'm going to create a new info bar. And we can see at the very top here, this is our info bar. So the same way as the pop-up, I'm going to add a large heading. I'm just going to drop it inside of my info bar. And we can use this to say something along the lines of 20% off until midnight for example, and we can, you know, center this text. Go ahead and exit my editing. And now we have this little info bar at the very top of my website that kind of scrolls with my website. And at the very top, we can choose to have this at the top or we can have it at the bottom of our website like that right there. We can also add a button over here, not just a headline, a purchase button, a countdown timer, things like that. I'm going to go ahead and click on exit for now. We are going to bring up our conversion tools again. And the next option that we have here is the action message. So when I enable the action message, same options as the other two elements, I'm going to click on create a new action message. And we can see this one is down here in the bottom right hand corner. And again, the same options. All we have to do is click and drag any element that we would like to add to our action message. I'm going to close out of that for now. And the last option that we have here inside of our conversion tools is the page overlay. So I'm going to enable that. I am going to create a new overlay. And this is an entire page overlay, as you can see, completely blank. And we can add anything to it that we would like. So you can use this as an opt-in form overlay when a visitor visits your website or any other ideas that you may have like that. I'm going to go ahead and exit off of that for now. And then I'm going to go back through here. I'm going to disable these for now so that I don't have too much stuff on my website. We're going to close out of our conversion tools, click the gear icon. The next option that we have here is the scripts and tracking code. This here just allows you to add any head script, body script, or footer script to your website. So any tracking codes or any scripts you need for other platforms that you are using, you can enter those here. I'm going to close out of that for now. And the last two options inside of our settings here is a change template and a save as template. So when you first created your website, you needed to choose a template to use or a blank canvas to work with. If you ever change your mind, you can click on change template and select a brand new template to use. And on the other hand, if you created a website template that you kind of like and would like to use on other pages, you can save this current website that you have as its own template and you can pick that later on when creating new websites. The next option here is the eyeball, which this allows you to preview your website and see exactly what it looks like. We also have the save option. So anytime you make any changes, you need to click on the save option. And then last but not least, we have the exit option here, which allows us to close and leave the page editor. So now that we have the main header and navigation area covered, let's go ahead and talk about the on page editing that we can do. So anytime that you would like to edit any element on your page, all you have to do is simply click on it. So let's get started with my logo. I'm going to click on that. And when you click on it, you're going to see a bunch of different options appear. The first option is going to be your settings for that individual element. So since I clicked on an image, I have image settings here. 
If I were to click on my video, I would have video settings instead and so forth. The next option that we have here is the change position. So we can choose to center this, move it to the left, move it to the right, etc. The next option here is the clone. If I wanted to duplicate this element, all I have to do is click this button here. Next up is the animations and the delay. So if I would like to add a type of animation or a delay to this element, I could do so by simply clicking on that button. The settings are gonna pop up. I can choose which animation I would like to use. So bounce, for example, and we can see that animation plays for us. And I can choose to delay this element from appearing when someone loads my website. The next option that we have here is the visibility. So I can click on this and I can choose whether I would like to hide this on certain devices or not. And then last but not least, we can choose to delete this element from our page. Now jumping back to the first option, which is the settings, all the settings are going to look a little bit different depending on which element you are editing. So the video settings, for example, when I click on that, it's gonna provide me settings that are related to a video. So I need to upload a video, whether it be YouTube, Vimeo, or I embed it. I have some options here just for that video and some formatting options. If I were to choose my logo, for example, and click on the image settings, you can see the settings are a little bit different. I need to upload an image instead of a video. When it comes to editing text on your page, all you have to do is simply double click on the text that you would like to change, and that's gonna open up the editor for you, where you can then come in here and delete the current text, replace it. We have all the different options that you are pretty familiar with if you ever worked inside of WordPress or any other text editor. We have the different formatting, the icons, bullet points, different fonts, different sizes, and different styles. And whenever you are finished editing your text, all you have to do is click on exit editing down there at the bottom right hand corner. Same thing for our button. For example, if I click on our button settings, the options that we have here are the text on the button. And of course, we need to decide what happens when someone clicks this button. We can redirect them to a URL. We can open up a pop-up form, which we talked about earlier in the video. We can submit a form if we have an opt-in form and so forth. And of course, we have all the different customization options for this button. Gonna go ahead and close out of that. Now that's how you edit things inside of the page editor. Very simple. Now when it comes to actually adding new things to your website, all you have to do is click on this little plus symbol on the left hand side. And when you do that, on the far left hand side, this little black strip that you see here, these are gonna be all the different elements that you can add to your website. So we have blocks, columns, text, boxes, images, videos, and so forth. Now when you click on one of these, like a button for example, on the right hand side, this is going to update with all the different elements that you can add to your website that are related to the option that you selected here. So I selected a button for example, so they give us six pre-built buttons that I can take and simply drag it to wherever I want it to be and then drop it and it's going to appear there. And then I can come in here and I get my new settings for that button that I can customize here. Let's go ahead and go back to our elements here and let's choose counter for example. And you're gonna see we have a bunch of different counters. So we have counters going upwards like this here and we have a countdown timer that we can add as well. If we click on social for example, we have three different social bars that we can click and drag to our website and so forth for each one of these elements here. For some of the elements, like boxes for example, we have our standard boxes that you can click and drag into the page editor, but we also have some done for you options as you can see here. This one here includes a header, an image, a description, and bullet points. So if I click that and I drag it over here, and let's just drop it right there, we can see we have a bunch of different options that we can customize inside of this product box. And one more element that I wanna talk about, we're gonna click on the plus symbol again, is our blocks at the very top. This here is a list of all pre-made blocks that you can insert into your page. So you can see here, we have a bunch of different pre-made blocks. And this is a little bit different than the pre-made element because as you can see, the element was placed inside of my website without changing anything around it. These pre-made blocks are actually full width blocks that are gonna be their own part of the website. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. You can see when I placed this pre-made element 
here on my page, it's actually a part of my page. I still have the same background color and it's within my content. So let's scroll to the bottom here and underneath my button, we're gonna add one of these pre-made blocks. So let's take this one here where it says our team. We're gonna click that and you can see it looks a little bit different when I go to drop it on my website. It's no longer dropping it inside of the rest of my content. It's gonna create its own section. So let's drop it in between this till background and the button. And when I do that, we can see it's its own new part of the website. Okay, and I can come in here and I can edit all of this information. So not only do we have pre-made elements like this here, we also have pre-made entire blocks that you can add to your website like this here. And we have quite a few of those if we jump back here. We can scroll through here and see that we have a bunch of different options, pricing tables, a contact us block, an opt-in block, and quite a few opt-in blocks, a mobile app block, and different things like that. All right, and as I said, depending on which element you add to your website, they will have their own custom settings that you need to configure. And that's pretty much all there is when it comes to using the page editor inside of your funnel builder. Now, as I said, depending on which element you select and add to your website, they will have their own custom settings for that element, but it's all pretty much self-explanatory. For example, if I used a social element here, I would need to enter my social details like my Facebook fan page, my Twitter handle, things like that. If something is still confusing when it comes to using the page editor, please let us know so that we can create a tutorial video for that feature as well.